Yes. So what the Japanese have done is they look at the broad spectrum and they say, well, one in five hundred, we've got to uh, we've got to uh, you know suck it up and, and and move forward. But in fact, the numbers are skewed because the burden is placed disproportionately on the very young who never used the nuclear power in the first place. So the people who use the nuclear power who are older in the population are are likely to die of something else and there's and so the risk has been displaced onto the uh, onto younger uh, younger people of the population. Now, I thought there was so much concern and agitation in Japan about that 20 millisievert or 2 rem dose that they have changed the the standard to which people can be exposed. Have they changed it, or is it t- still 20 millisieverts, Ani? I, as far as I know, it's still oh. 20 millisieverts. Um, you know, there's talk of, over time, lowering the standards. Um, but, you know, that's a, that's a game. They're, they're just... Uh, it's a game. Uh, the standards were low uh, for all of these materials. You know, we talk about this, uh, the, the land, the, the material that's being placed in landfills in any other country on the planet would be considered radioactive waste and would have to be, you know, monitored in secure facilities for 300 years. And and here the Japanese are spreading it out all over their country. So um, they they arbitrarily raise the standards and then say we comply with standards that are, you know, much higher than any other civilized country country in the in the world would tolerate but we're only talking about external gamma radiation aren't we arnie gunderson we're not talking about the radioactive elements that are imbibed through eating radioactive food drinking radioactive tea and inhaling radioactive air that land in various organs uh, irradiating um, small volumes of cells with high doses. Those internal emitters are not being included in the calculation of the 20 millisieverts dose per year. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. This is an external dose. And, you know, my problem, again, with kids, they're going to get it on their shoes. They're going to tie their shoelaces. They're going to put their hands in their mouth. Uh, they're going to kick it up in sports or, or whatever. And it will either get in their lungs or in their GI tract and, and cause further damage. It's so uh, much we are, so we're far from out of the woods of, on uh, exposure to the, the most vulnerable people in society. And, you know, pregnant women are even worse. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, the, the fetuses are more likely to, uh, to be at risk. But so much of the food's radioactive. You know, I've got friends here in Australia who they go to Japan skiing, and I think the skiing areas, only, are they not, are up in the northwest of Japan? Where the radiation went? Yes, they are, uh, and uh, you know they're offering packages, and people still go. Um, um, what can I say, Helen? I wouldn't ski there. Come to Vermont. Uh, there's there's the lesson. <laughs> they take their children there too. To, and one final question, and I'll let you go because I know you're tired, Annie. But what do you think long term this is going to do to Japan and to its economic climate? Well, you know, it's interesting because I'm working on a report for Greenpeace that has to do with what are the long-term issues. You know, uh, Mikolai Gorbachev credits Chernobyl as toppling his government. Mm. Uh, He said, you know, forget perestroika or any of that. Mm. Chernobyl had a bigger effect at toppling communism than did any of these other things. And I think we're seeing that in Japan, too. We're seeing... Um, you know, one government has already collapsed because of, um, uh, of of Fukushima, and another one is not doing a very good job either. So I think, you know, if I were a, um, a politician, I would say, you know, the downside of this is that an accident can destroy the way a country is governed. Um, and, and um, you know, so the, the consequences politically, uh, you know, and obviously, you know, physically to the to the people who are exposed are enormous and ongoing for, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years. Well, and also their exports, their cars and various stuff that Japan exports, a huge amount of stuff, some of it is being found to, to be radioactive, you know, and, and countries are sending back radioactive cars and the like. So yeah. that'll now have an impact. Uh, 
Helen, that's used cars predominantly. Um, you know, like uh, mm-hmm. I know Australia gets a lot of used cars from Japan. The Japanese have laws where you can't keep a car but so many miles. So cars that look good and, and, and in fact, would be run in other countries get shipped to Russia or to Australia. And when those cars are, are uh, disembarking in, in Australia, um, they're radioactive. <clears throat> but nobody's looking for that radiation. Um in fact, I'm sure that if I were there with a Geiger counter, I could find it in five minutes. But the people at the docks are, have been instructed by their governments not to look. Well, on that cheery and really happy note, honey, <laughs> I think we'll we'll end this. I, I, I love talking to you because you always have such fresh, interesting information. And I know that our listeners are hungry for your reports, Arnie, um, as we provide them intermittently about the ongoing tragedy in Japan, and I thank you so much for coming on today. Well, could I add one thing? Please do. Um, I will be in Tokyo on the uh, 18th of uh, February through the 25th of February. Um, Maggie and I were interviewed for a book, and the book is being published on the 17th of February by Shueisha, and it's titled, uh, it's in Japanese only, but it's titled uh, uh, Fukushima Daiichi, the truth and the way forward. And um, I'll be presenting a plan so that Japan can be non, uh, uh, have no nuclear power plants and yet still not be pushed back into, uh, you know, into the Ice Age or something like that. Well, it's, it's only got three of the 54 operating now. So in truth, Japan can easily operate, it seems, if, if they tighten their belts with energy efficiency, it can easily operate without nuclear power, and, and therefore you could extrapolate that situation to America, couldn't you, Arnie? Yes, and, and I will be when I'm in Japan. Oh, super. Well, thanks a lot again, and uh, have a lovely night's sleep. I know you're tired for morning. It, for me, it's the morning. For you, you've done a big day's work, so sweet dreams, Arnie. Okay, thank you, Helen. Thank Goodbye. You. Bye. My guest today on If You Love This Planet was Arnie Gunderson, an energy advisor with over 30 years of nuclear power engineering experience in the United States.